This is going to be the second and final video I make on my daily driver headset, which is simply FIFO fucking flagship phenomenal. And keep in mind, I'm out of the honeymoon phase. I've got those cream covered goggles removed because I've owned this set of cans for eight and a half months. I use it five to seven days a week. The purpose of this video is to be a part two follow up owner's review. Any problems that might have arose, any cons that I might have noticed in daily use over the last eight months. I also want to touch on some very recommended, at least one for sure, aftermarket upgrades for this headset. I'll also talk about using this headset with an audio interface or mixer like the Go XLR, using a ground loop isolator and piping into one of those ports in the back of the base station. And this headset was absolutely dirty, filthy, disgusting until I pimped it out this morning with this sick little 90s retro pattern and ear cups. The stock stuff was all gummed up with my skin oils, residuar, hair particles. These are sick. So first of all, I want to touch on what I do like about this headset because there are quite a few pros to this headset. First of all, it is customizable very easily. You can pop off these panels. You can change the ear strap. You can also get aftermarket ear cups, which are kind of a bitch to change out because they're on a clip system, but you can change them out for something more mesh and breathable. It's substantially more comfortable. And that is the most recommended upgrade for this headset is going to be picking up an aftermarket set of ear cups that is mesh and breathable. I talk about it later. There is really no downside to popping for these as opposed to the stock pleather leatherette material, or even if it's authentic leather, don't matter. These are still Mo Supremo. Because I mentioned during my Razer Black Shark V2 review recently, that that headset was more comfortable than my daily drivers, which is this headset. However, au contraire, sweetheart, after putting on these aftermarket ear cups and the little silicone head strap is an upgrade as well. Although you'll notice that more if you are a baldy, which I ain't. I got a mop of flowing up here. It's now absolutely tied neck and neck with the Razer Black Sharks. They're both supremely comfortable headsets that you can wear for hours on end. One of the things I like most about the Arctis Nova Pros is going to be the customization. These are some licensed accessories from Steel Series, a headband and speaker plate kit, or as they call it, a booster pack, which they also do have a limited edition Modern Warfare 3 edition that was sent out from Steel Series. I thank you. I won't be using this personally. I will be giving it away at the end of the video. But there is a huge aftermarket of third party companies on Amazon that do sell accessories for the Arctis Pros, such as ear cups, different material headbands, different material and color ear cups, and even these plates, which you can also pop off and spray paint. If you know how to spray paint correctly, this would actually look pretty damn good. But these are a couple accessories I picked up on Amazon, which will be linked in the description below, as well as the headset itself. One of the very, very few complaints and probably the biggest one I have about this headset is how much of a pain in the rump it is to swap out the ear cups. It's not magnetized quick swap. You have these little clips, which is actually even worse of a method or design than that little plastic trough, which I complain about because it sucks rump. This sucks even more ass cheek because you feel like you're going to break your ear cups when you remove them. Granted, you should need to do this very often until they get all gooped up on you. However, I'm changing these out because these are a different material, not just this cool 90s retro pattern, but this is a mesh breathable material, which I always prefer over authentic leather or some kind of pleather leatherette artificial leather. It feels a little bit better on the skin and also provides more breathability. So if you're somebody that gets sweaty ear holes, this should mitigate that. And since it's still sealed on the inner part, you're still sealing in all your sound, giving you that same closed back isolation. So there really is no downside to running these. So like I mentioned, it does feel like you're going to break the clips, especially the first time you remove them, which this was the first time I've removed these ear cups on this particular model. Here's a look at the drivers. Mm, gorgeous, gorgeous. Not really, actually. These are cosmetically not as sexy looking drivers as other headsets on the market, but more importantly, they do sound pretty goddamn good. Now you're going to line up these two plastic clips with these two slots right here and then firmly press and it will snap into place. Come on, show the internet what a badass you are. Do this shit one handed. I have a stand too. It's right there. I just don't feel like using it right now. I like to go freehand because I can show you what I'm looking at. So at first glance, it looks like you can install these either way. However, there's a correct orientation as you see these kind of taper down. And then if you look at the ear cups, the bottom also tapers down like a teardrop shape. Push down the clips. There's no chance of you doing this one handed. I'm not much for groveling. Oh, please take me back. I can do better next time. I'll change. However, I am on a single knee begging and pleading Steel Series on their next version or iteration of this headset, which otherwise is a phenomenal set of cans. Please. Pretty, pretty please with a cherry atopeth. Do not ever use this clip design. There are mid-level headsets in the $150 price point that have magnetized hot swappable ear caps. What the hell are we doing here in a $320 headset? Honestly. Who throws a shoe?
Honestly. What is going to be substantially easier for us to install is going to be this head strap, which is actually a different material. This is a very soft, supple rubber or silicone, which not only provides more flex and thus more, well, size adjustment than the stalker, which already has a good amount of stretch, but this has a little bit more. But the main benefit to this is if you are going to be either working out with these on or just sweating in them, this is definitely easier to clean than this cloth material because this is, well, rubber. Also, I will say this material does feel better, but you're only really going to notice that if you are bald and you're getting that material to skin contact. If you have hair working as a barrier, you're probably not going to be like, mm, well, this supple rubber feels better on my dome than this nylon strap. If you're bald, you sure as shit will notice. Getting these in and out is super easy. This is also how you're going to do the size adjustment on this headset, which originally I thought was going to be a huge uh, sack of wieners, which I thought was going to be a huge limitation, only having about three steps of adjustment. But this nylon head strap does a fantastic job. Anyway, just pull them out. Boop. And sure enough, you guessed it because you're a smart stallion or stallionette. Just line them up with the holes, pop them right back in. I completely forgot what color this booster pack was. It's called mint, and I have to say it looks phenomenal. Something else to note, another reason that I would advise going with an aftermarket set of these panels, these plates, is that the stalkers collect a bunch of dead skin. And the reason that that happens is there's a bunch of little micro lines that go around in a circle. And all you really need to do is accidentally brush up against these, and it will start peeling away that outside layer of your skin. It doesn't really feel very good to your fingertips when you swipe like this either. However, all these aftermarket ones are solid, they're smooth, so you don't have that issue. Steel series, these, these plates should also be solid and smooth, not a bunch of little micro circles which collect dead skin particles. These turned out absolutely phenomenal in my personal opinion. I will say if I can find those plates or side panels in that matching 90s retro pattern, I think it'll look even better, but that mint actually does go pretty good with this colorway. So overall, my final sentiment with this headset, it is phenomenal on the PC side of the house, but it does have some limitations that being it doesn't really work on the PS5 at all. There is Bluetooth support on that console, but not open Bluetooth protocol. In fact, most third-party controllers and headsets are going to be blocked and not allowed to pair to the console. This included, which sucks. You can actually use the base station though, and that will allow you to use them, but that kind of sucks because if you want to use this on your PC with the base station, that means every single time you want to use it on your console, you'd have to move it over there. Me personally, I wouldn't like to lug around that base station. I just want to be able to take a dongle or even just pair via Bluetooth on board and just leave the base station stationary set at my desk where it's going to live. But these are still absolutely phenomenal and are linked in the description below alongside the customization parts used in this video. So unfortunately, the WC earplates came somewhat yellowed. I guess they keep them stored in the Amazon warehouse for too long and they begin to yellow. And same thing with the head strap. It's not as noticeable on the silicone head strap, but definitely on these side plates. Hopefully the lighting picks that up. The ear cups are damn near perfect. But you can definitely see somewhat of a vanilla, warmer, eggshell tone. The head strap I'm going to be keeping, however, these ear cups, they just feel incredibly cheap and flimsy. And in combination with that discoloration, I'm going to go ahead and return them. And I actually painted my stock plates a little rattle can action. And I have to say they turned out absolutely phenomenal. They look OEM or factory. One purple, one teal to go with the theme or setup. I even did it with the curtains and wall panels and whatnot. Since I'm not going to use these bad boys, they're just really not my flavor. The first stallion or stallionette to type booster in the comment section below. So I'll correspond me sending this bad boy out to you. As for running this headset with a mixer, you're going to use the 3.5 millimeter line out port on the back of the base station and you are going to plug into, well, at least on the Go XLR, the headphone port. And you are going to notice you're going to have a pretty nasty hum or buzz. And the only way to eliminate that is to get a ground loop noise isolator. I learned about these bad boys when reading an article trying to figure out for myself how to get up and running with a mixer and a wireless headset because there is only a hand full of them that allow you to do that. It's going to be the Astro A50s, not the X's unfortunately, they did away with the 3.5 mil out, but have an absolute shit ton of HDMI ports for every platform on the back, which a lot of reviewers are listing as a con because it works as an actual video switcher as well, which... We'll, we'll touch on that when I review the headset. It could be absolutely perfect for you if that's what you want in your living room setup, but if you don't want to be switching between video and audio inputs like that, that's a huge pain in the dick hole. Anyway, back on target. I bought three different brands of these ground loop isolators. They're all between five and ten dollars. Tested them, and the one that cut out the most buzz, at pretty much all of it, there's no hum or buzz unless I crank the headset up so loud that a volume I would never have it at. This has always been around this ten dollar mark. It is going to be linked in the description below. It also matters where you plug in 
in that isolator, you are going to plug it as shown from the B-roll on screen here, just in case you're listening to me like a radio broadcaster or something, you are going to plug it near your headphone base station and not near the back of your mixer. Then using a separate 3.5 millimeter male to male cable to plug to your mixer. All that's linked in the description below. So running that configuration, it cuts out all of that hum or buzz, which the Astro A50s did not. If I cranked them up about three quarter volume or so, which I got to from time to time, if it was a quiet game, I would hear a little bit of that hum or buzz, which was unfortunate. I almost got used to it, just like living with tinnitus or something. You just kind of like, uh, yep, that, there it is. You don't get that with the Novas. But the old hum or buzz, as long as you're using a ground loop isolator, as AK-40 Kevin just shown you here, that felt weird. I never talk about myself in the third person and I'll never do it again. What I've come to not really like is going to be the microphone quality, which doesn't really matter for me because I hardly ever use the built-in microphone. However, when I am using it, pardon, on the consoles, I'm going to have a tendency to retract that microphone, which I do love that it is a retractable microphone, very flexible, also has an LED mute indicator, seals up flush, which is really nice. You don't have to worry about this thing being removable and then you losing it because it doesn't come with a carrying case, although it does come with a little satin pouch, which is something. But the actual microphone quality, I'm going to give you a mic check in just a second. Not going to recycle the one from eight months ago. I'm going to shoot you a freshie so you can hear what my sound waves resonate like on this little boom mic suck hole. But my God, it's not great, and especially in comparison to something like the Black Shark V2 and also the Astro A50Xs, which I personally haven't used, but I was watching some reviews and the mic tests. Mwah. Quite a bit to be desired with the microphone quality on this bad boy. This is a microphone test of the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless. How does it sound? Probably wildly mediocre. You can definitely get by with this microphone in a pinch or in a clutch, but if you are on the PC side of the house, I would definitely recommend getting some kind of a mounted, dedicated microphone, whether it's USB or XLR, because you will get uncomparably better audio quality. But if you're on the console side of the house, you're probably going to be running this microphone, and this is what your bros are going to hear. For a little comparison, this is is a clip from the $130 cheaper Razer Black Shark I just reviewed. This is a microphone test with the Razer Black Shark V2 2023 edition. We have the microphone volume at 80 and the volume normalization at 50. Now having removed those love goggles and getting out of the honeymoon phase, the plastics do feel and look a little bit cheap from here at the bottom of the head strap and then right around these ear cups. So not this colored section, but right here and not the headband, which feels phenomenal because it does have a dual layer thing going on with some very durable rubber coated plastics and then this metal band and I have actually bent the ever living shit out of this headset. I'm not going to do it here because I felt bad doing it the first time. It is a well built headset but right here this little hinge mechanism uh, just feels incredibly cheap and plasticky and these plastics don't look great. I do like that it swivels though so you can just place it around your neck like a $320 necklace. I'm the prettiest girl at the ball. I do really like the base station because you have a visual display of what is going on through both of the ear cups and you can also adjust the volume in three places. Yes, that's correct. Three. You can adjust it with the slider in Windows. You can adjust it with the scroll wheel on the back of the headset and then with the dial wheel on the base station on your desk, which keep in mind also has a battery constantly charging for you, in essence, giving you everlasting infinite battery life. And each one of the batteries lasts a long ass time anyway, so it's not like I'm ever depleted. I've never gotten even a low battery indicator on this thing. I do like that this has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the bottom. That's rad. I said that the Black Shark V2 does that. Well, I'm an idiot. And I was looking at the port that's for plugging in the microphone. A Nimrod mistake. I must have doubled down on my medication that day. So do I think this is a good buy at $330? And how do I think it stacks up against the competition, the other flagship wireless headsets out there? Well, in virtually every aspect, component, feature, and possible lens and way you could look at it, the Steel Series beats the shit out of the Turtle Beach Stealth. Sound quality wise and comfort is very close to the Asteroid 50s. However, there's a lot of features that the Steel Series has that the Asteroid 50s do not, such as Bluetooth, a hot swappable battery, a decent microphone, and active noise cancellation. Now the A50Xs integrate a lot of those features, but they do remove that 3.5 millimeter jack, thus making it not a good fit for running an audio interface or a mixer, which is quite unfortunate. Thus leaving these headphones in a very interesting position where they are pretty much the best. Can you, can you see me through this? It won't focus on me. That's crazy. But like, I'm really tricking this camera right now. Puts this headset in quite a predicament where it is the only really good high-end flash flagship headset other than a couple of lower end steel series headsets that share the same base station that can be used with an audio interface because you got the A50s which are really outdated and have now been replaced with the A50X which no longer works with mixers but even if you're not using an audio interface for the XLR microphone setup if you're just using a plug and play USB microphone so you can use any headset the Black Shark V2 I just reviewed is a phenomenal headset and is 
$20 cheaper. So I'd strongly recommend that if you're on a budget or just don't feel comfortable spending $330 on a headset. But I absolutely love the Nova Pros. They are phenomenal. This is the last video I'm going to make about them unless they just explode and I happen to record it on camera. That's just damn good content. Right place, right time. Other than a crazy act of God like that, um, this is the last time we're going to be talking about this headset. It is phenomenal and it is linked down there in the description below. Drop in the comment section below what you're using in the headset department. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So molly wop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow tomorrow.